watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and our next guest is zooming in. He is a podcaster, a writer, a speaker, the founder of The Way Forward, and he's also the co-creator of a video project called The End of COVID, which is an ambitious, video-driven project, carefully structured online educational courses, which presents interviews, presentations, and conversations discussing every aspect of the pandemic and its associated socio-cultural and political impacts. Um, welcome to the program, Alec Zek. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. I'm glad, where are you zooming in from, Alec? Central Texas. Central Texas, okay, great. So. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on the end of COVID. The, so it's a video project. It's not necessarily called a movie or a series, TV series. Right? It's called a video project. So where can people see this project? Yeah, just by going to the endofcovid.com and you bring up an important point. Um, we've almost been struggling to try to uh, clarify exactly what it is because it's not a docu-series. Um, it's, it's more educationally driven than a, a typical docu-series would be. But it's also not a summit because it's uh, topic specific. And then it's not a course because you're not just watching PowerPoint presentations over and over again. It's kind of a unique combination of all of those things. And it consists of um, 90 presentations, interviews, roundtable discussions, and then a few documentary films and the intention is to discuss every single detail of what happened over the last three and a half years and beyond so that um, men and women of mankind are properly informed on exactly what happened so we can ensure something like this doesn't happen again. Okay, so, and I'll just premise this by saying I'm a fairly science-driven person that believed in the pandemic and, you know, AIDS and all the different things we've gone through. So I was interested to talk to you because I do like to hear different perspectives and hear, you know, I, I'm interested in this video driven project and the interviews. So tell me about how this project even came to be. You have a couple co-creators that you work with, right? And then who are the people that you have interviewed for this? Yeah, so th this is a great question. So it was a collaborative effort between my organization, The Way Forward, another organization called Alpha Vedic, and then an additional organization called The Sovereign's Way, based out of the UK. And it features over 95 um, doctors, scientists of various types, doctors of various types as well, independent researchers, filmmakers, authors, etc. cetera. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how it came about. And we, um, of course, cover the situation of the last three and a half years in a way that the mainstream will not cover it, but we back up everything that we say with scientific studies and papers um, covering all the details of what went on the last three and a half years and beyond. So is the premise that, just to clarify, because in my mind I'm thinking that it is, um, that it didn't happen or that it was, you know, somehow science, uh, somehow it was, you know, created this kind of concept of COVID was, was, is it fake? Is that your assumption here? Or what, what is the, the purpose of it or the, the kind of things you're trying to, the message you're trying to get across? Yeah, this is, this is an interesting question. I think this gets down to the meaning of words. So when you say fake, was COVID fake? Um, well, the, the situation definitely appeared to be real based on how people were responding, based on the measures that the government took, based on what was shown in the media. There was a lot of uh, indications in our environment that there was something happening. But I'd like to throw some data coming straight from the CDC to sort of clarify the perspective that we come from. And it's that 95% of COVID deaths, and again, this is according to the CDC, had an average of four comorbidities, most being lifestyle nutrition related. 79% of hospitalizations were in overweight or obese people. And the second strongest risk factor for death, according to a study published in part by the CDC in July of 2021, was fear slash anxiety related disorders. That was the second strongest risk factor for death. So now an interesting question, then should arise for anyone who's thinking objectively and thinking critically, why is it that given their own data reflected that the second strongest risk factor for death was fear slash anxiety related disorders, why is it that they kept us in a perpetual state of fear? 
Why is it that the government mm. stoked fear over the last three and a half years and the mainstream media on all sides? Why did they continue to stoke fear over the last three and a half years, knowing their own data showed how important it was to dispel fear? Mm. So the, the premise that we come from with this is um, the idea that disease is spread via the fluids of a sick person we sort of approach reality as if this is a well-established, indisputable scientific fact. But in fact, if you look at the countless studies that have been done up until roughly the 1950s or 60s, attempting to prove scientifically via natural means, and that is a point of emphasis here, via the, the fluids of a sick person that disease is spread that way, every one of those experiments turned out to show the exact opposite, that they could not replicate symptoms of illness in healthy people by exposing them to the fluids of a sick person. And one of those experiments that is uh, fairly well known in the health slash freedom community was the Rosenau experiments that were conducted during the height of the Spanish flu from 1918 through 1919. And Milton Rosenau exposed 100 volunteers to the fluids of sick people who were mm. sick with the Spanish flu. But it, what we're attempting to ascertain in this is what is the cause of the people becoming sick and he already had the presupposition that it was spread via the fluids of sick people so he took right. 100 volunteers exposed them via various means injected infected blood into healthy volunteers um, swabbed the back of uh, sick patients throats and and put it inside the throats of these healthy volunteers had several of the healthy volunteers go into a spanish flu ward and interact with Spanish flu patients, had them open mouth cough in their face, faces. Yum. <laughs> and it turns out that none of these volunteers became sick as a result of these experiments. Huh. But this isn't the only example. We have countless so, other examples. So that's this is the kind of stuff that we would be able to hear and learn about in your the video project, the end of COVID, right? We'd hear see examples and hear from scientists on these specific research studies. And you know, for people that um, who is the movie for, just to wrap up quickly, because um, we only have about a minute left. You know, who would, who do you want to go see this movie? Is it people like me that, that you know, would say, maybe I don't necessarily believe these things, but I'm willing to open my ears and, and hear and listen to what you guys have to say? Yeah, I, I would say this, that I come from a position where I would have approached what I am currently putting out six years ago as something that is total nonsense. But because I have an open mind and I would hope that others have an open mind to look at information objectively, that's who we're calling to view this material. Right. Because of course, we've known throughout history that the media, the governments on all sides, on every side, not just the right, not just the left, just the right too, have manipulated right. people for certain reasons. So and where it, can people find it, Alec? We can find you at theendofcovid.com, right? And yes, theendofcovid.com. Okay, perfect. So people can go check this out on the website, theendofcovid.com. Thank you so much for being here today, Alex Zek. And you're watching America Trends.